So in this video, we're going to have a look at the different types of pressure groups you can find and how we can sort of group pressure groups into different groups, effectively. So this is what we're going to be looking at in this lesson, okay? So pressure groups are said to be classified according to two main what we call typologies, okay? So there is the sectional group, cause group typology, which classifies pressure groups by their main aims. There's also the insider-outsider types to classify pressure groups, which classifies them by their relations with government. So these are two ways in which we can classify them, okay? We can classify them either as sectional or cause, or insider or outsider groups, okay? So let's start with sectional groups. These are classifying pressure groups by their aims from political thinkers in the 1950s, like J.D. Stewart, okay? And these are the first types of um, sectional groups, okay? These were developed in the 1950s, okay? They're sometimes referred to as protectionist groups or even private interest groups. And basically, though they are those that aim to advance the shared interests of their members, okay? So they don't really campaign for a broader cause. They want to effectively, you know, get the most positive benefit for the people that are in the group as possible. So they're generally more exclusive, which means that individuals tend to have to meet certain requirements before joining. And an example in the UK is the BMA, okay, the British Medical Association. It's a sectional group for those who are qualified practitioners, okay, and it falls into the sectional group, A, because they're, it's more exclusive, you have to be a qualified practitioner, and B, the aim of the BMA is to advance the shared interests of its members. Okay, the same could also be said for the American Medical Association, the AMA, in the, in the US. Cause groups are a little bit different. They're sometimes known as promotional groups or public interest groups. And these are these pressure groups seek to promote approaches, issues, or ideas that are not of direct benefit to the group members. So they generally look to establish a wide membership base and do not put any sort of boundaries of entry. Okay, there's not generally any requirements to enter because they want to get as many people in the pressure group as possible to promote the ideas or the issues at play, okay? So, for example, the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds, RSPB, uh, the RSPB, as of 2020, has over 18,000 volunteers and over a million members, making it the largest environmental society in Europe. Its aims are to promote uh, the ideas and issues uh, and awareness around the protection of birds, okay? So as a result, this falls neatly into the cause group typology, okay? Because there's no general entry requirement and it has a cause, it, has, it promotes public interest, okay? There are other types of sectional and cause, and cause groups. These are the, just the two main um, branches of the sectional slash cause group typology. So as with everything, it's often hard to put each and every pressure group into one of these two categories. So for this reason, there are other categories. There are attitude cause groups, which are, is a group that seeks to change people's attitude on a particular issue. An example of this could be Greenpeace or Oxfam. Okay, they... They say they do exactly what it says on the tin. They try to change people's mind. Greenpeace, for example, wants to bring people uh, to change their mind about the environment and climate change. There are also partic uh, sorry, political cause groups, which are a group that campaigns in pursuit of a cause that is essentially political in nature. Okay, So, for example, Business for Britain or uh, leave.eu are both brexit related pressure groups okay so they're to do with uh, leaving or remaining in the european union and therefore they fit the cause groups category but they also fit the political cause groups subcategory okay and there are also sectional cause groups okay so a group that represents a specific section of society that is distinct from its own membership so this is sort of a little bit complicated to understand. If there are two different types of pressure groups, sectional or cause, what does it mean to have a sectional cause group? Well, it's 
like this, a group that represents a specific section of society that is distinct from its own membership. For example, the National Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children or the National Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, the NSPCC or NSPCA. Okay, They have a cause and they um, represent something that's distinct from its membership. So children and animals aren't members of the NSPCC or NSPCA. It's adults that protect these um, two groups. When it comes to the second kind of ways we can we can um, put pressure groups into their types, we can look at insider versus outsider. So let's have a look at start with insider groups. Insider groups are those pressure groups that enjoy a closer and positive relationship uh, in government. Okay, so for example, the BMA British Medical Association are described as core insiders. Okay, core insider groups. The BMA is helpful in the process of policy making in a number of different areas, especially areas relating to the NHS. So these are pressure groups that seek to influence and have influence over the government and are actually very intertwined with the policy making process. Okay. Specialist insiders are those groups which are granted such status within a more narrow area of expertise. Okay, For example, WWF are seen as a specialist insider group within the protection of uh, wild animals. Outsider groups are effectively the polar opposite of insider groups. Okay, So outsider groups are those that are basically they work out of the loop. Okay, they are do not have any sort of strong or close relationship with the current government. Okay, and they therefore most of their actions are outside of government policy meeting rooms. They are, uh, you know, demonstrations, for example. And there are three kinds of ways that we can um, subdivide outsider groups even more. So we have potential insider outsider groups which are groups that are currently outsider groups but they have the potential to become insider groups okay um there are also outsiders by necessity groups that are forced to operate as outsider groups as a result of there being no realistic prospect for regular consultation with the government this may be because of the group's main aims or their chosen methods so this is a very interesting one uh, basically ones that have to be outsider groups because they don't they can't really um, be part of government uh, conversations and then there are ideological outsiders groups that look to avoid establishing a close relationship with government they don't want to become ins uh, insiders so for example uh, amnesty international is one that needs to remain and maintain its impartiality so when you have not all outsider groups are seeking to be insider groups. Some of them don't want to have a working relationship with government. Some of them can't have a working relationship with government, like Amnesty International, because they need to remain apolitical and impartial um, to um, different um, the, the political um, climate that's going on. Okay, So for this reason, you have different kinds of outsider groups, some that want to join and some that can't join, some that don't want to join, effectively. Okay.